Okay, hi, I'm Amir, I work on Flutter, and I'm going to talk about animation management with Redux and Flutter. And there's a talk about Redux two more, and I'm not going to go deeply into details about how Redux works. So if you're interested in that, I encourage you to attend the Redux talk, the application architecture talk tomorrow. Okay, the first thing I will say is that there are many opinions on how to do things out there, and this is just one more suggestion, so not a silver bullet, definitely. Okay, I'm going to explain this idea by walking through an example implementation of the 2048 game. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to explain the game. So if you don't know the game, just remember that the user picks a direction, left, right, up, or down, and all the tiles slide in that direction and some of them merge. So this is how it looks when I swipe right. The tiles slide to the right and some tiles merge. Okay. So we're going to implement this with a Redux architecture, and this is a very typical Redux architecture where the UI responds to user events by dispatching actions to the store. The store is where we manage our state, and the store responds to actions by computing new states and publishing these states back to the UI. And we're going to represent the state for the game with a four by four integer matrix. Um, and we're implementing uh, four mutation operations, move left, right, up, and down. Here we see a unit test for the move right uh, operation, which is basically what you would expect. Um, this is how we set the gesture detector for our game board. We basically say, when we detected an horizontal drag, uh, we just need to figure out what was the direction, left or right and dispatch a move left or move right action to the store. And this is the only thing that the UI is doing directly in response to user events, dispatching actions to the store. The next thing we need to do is to wire our UI. Um, we get an update from the store with a new state and we need to show that on the screen. Um, without animations, this is pretty straightforward. We just get the state from the store update, and we build a widget tree that shows the board for that state. Um, animations makes this a little bit more complex, and this is what I'm going to talk about. So with animations, the last state update is no longer enough information to figure out what we should be showing on the screen. Um, given the last state, we don't know which transition we should be showing. To deal with that, we can add more information with our store updates. So in addition to the current state, we also include the previous state and the action that triggered the update. So that triplet is enough information to know which transition we should be showing on the screen. Um, so this is a snippet from the build method of our board widget, where we basically say, okay, we got this triplet from the store, we got a new state, but we also know the previous state and the last action, and we're going to use that triplet to build a new motion spec. So this is the unit test for our build motion spec method, and the motion spec is basically a description for which tile, where it should be going, what it should be doing on the screen. The next problem we have to deal with are animation conflicts, um, and an animation conflict is when a transition to state D is triggered while the application is transitioning between two other states. I find it useful to differentiate between two kinds of transition states. Real ones are when the application is actually waiting for something to happen versus cosmetic transitions, like the animation of the tiles sliding, are just there to make the user experience more smooth. So this is what our UI code is doing in response to a store update. It terminates any ongoing transition. It figures out figures out which transition it should be showing based on the triplet it got from the store, and it fires and forgets that transition. Not exactly forget it, because we still need a way to terminate it on the next store update. So what happens when you get an animation conflict? So here you see how it looks when I swipe left, everything is sliding, as, and while it is sliding, I swipe down. So what we get is this jump cut effect, where the ongoing animation is terminated, completed immediately, and the next one starts. And in this case, this is actually a, a decent uh, solution. So this actually feels responsive and natural in this case. And I argue that this is a decent fallback for 
most or many cosmetic transitions. Um, so to get that fallback, the jump cut effect by default, we need to make sure that our UI code uh, keeps a promise. And that promise is that given that the last store update was to state A, it is either showing state A or showing a transition to state A. Now, if you want more uh, custom conflict resolution, something more fancy than the jump cut effect, you can still do that by managing more state in the presentation layer in the UI, just make sure you still keep that promise. So this was quite a lot to squeeze in five minutes, so there's also a Medium article with more details, and the example code for the 2048 game is available on GitHub. Thank you.